All right, let me share an interesting case study with you. So in my last startup, where I was working on building products and uh, to sell the products as well, uh, we worked really hard in building our web application. We chose India's best uh, payment provider and payment aggregator. And uh, turns out there was an issue in that uh, payment model that we injected in our application. It was really interesting problem to solve as well. So whenever a user comes to buy our product, he clicks on purchase and it's a common thing that sometimes your purchase fails. But what nobody tells you that in the payment gateways and payment aggregators, it doesn't, fa it doesn't fail immediately. Payment aggregator tries on behalf of your payment, maybe that's a network drop or something, after a few minutes, and that minutes are really, really the crazy thing. Because whenever you buy something, you don't expect that, hey, if once the failure has happened, that means done, the failure has happened. I'm not gonna get charged again. But what most of these payment aggregators don't tell you that they actually retries for that same payment with that same uh, whole uh, cryptographic mechanism and everything, that, hey, just retry that. And sometimes the payment goes through. And this is the problem. A lot of time users were coming back to us with a complaint that, hey, first it said failure and then somehow I'm being charged, but I didn't receive my course. And you would also be mad on us that, hey, you charged us, but you didn't give the course access. Now, turns out this is a still a common problem that exists, but you have to actually learn about the event driven architecture so to solve this problem. And this is not just about a payment aggregator in India. This works in Stripe, this works in PayPal, and every single payment gateway. And this is just one problem that I'm sharing with you. And there are many other situations which are like this, which you really need to learn that how we can solve and mitigate these problems. I learned them through a hard way, uh, but I expect that you're gonna be uh, learning them uh, without being into that kind of a mess. This is known as event-driven architecture. And in some cases, if such events happen, that job of the payment aggregator or whoever the service provider is, his job is to notify you in your system and you have to create a system such that somebody can reach out and notify you that, hey, this event happened. We were able to capture this payment a little bit later or whenever that happened. And now you have to trigger some events in your database that, hey, let's give the access to the user or something like that. This is a really interesting problem and I wanted to really make uh, this kind of tutorial for a really long. So in this entire series, we're not only going to learn about the Next.js basics, but we are also going to learn about the event-driven architecture. Not only that, we are also going to learn that how we can decouple our authentication system. Decoupling the authentication system is one of the best thing that you can do. Not only that, you can focus just now on building the features which actually are useful for your users and you can sell it to the users. Most of the time people are just working too much in the authentication system. My goal always is work on the features. People are paying you not for authentication but the features that your application uh, is working on. So today we're going to learn in this whole series that how we can use Clerk as an authentication system and not just for having the email, password, sign up and login. Everybody can do that. Sign up login is not an issue. But what the Clerk provides you are the superpowers that you can enable with just a toggle. For example, if I just toggle into the Clerk, automatically maybe I don't want to accept more users. So automatically my sign up form will become into a waiting list form. That's awesome. I don't have to write any more code for it. Maybe you want to support GitHub just one toggle. Maybe you want to support LinkedIn, just one toggle. Maybe you want to verify every single users by sending them an email and have an OTP with them. That's what we are going to learn in this course, but hey, that's just one toggle. Not only that, maybe your website is under attack and you want to enable the captchas. No, you don't have to write extra code for it because your time, your code, your work should go on to building features, not only these basics. So let somebody else handle this. This is too much of the code, too much of the engineering time. Let somebody else handle that. So I'll show you that how you can just with the toggle, you can enable the captchas, automatic captchas that are served automatically behind the scene or maybe upfront captcha. Hey, fix this and then only you can log in. And this is just the tip of the iceberg that I'm telling you. Clerk is really the holy grail of the authentication system. They're constantly building more. And we're gonna learn that how we can actually decouple these authentication system from application. It will be a standalone entity. And through that, we're gonna bring up everything in our own databases, our own email ID system, our users will be created, all of this. This is going to be one of the uh, great example. Not only that, not only that. When you work in the real world production system, Testing these webhooks and event-driven architecture is a no joke. You cannot do that on your local host, not on 127.0.0.1.
it's a pain. You cannot do that. So we're going to learn that how these uh, tunnel proxies works and how these tunneling system works. So we're going to learn through about the engine, engine rock and how you can have a testing system set up within your local host because this is what is expected from you when you go into a real world startup or a production system. This is that production system that we're going to learn about that. And our focus is to build a starter template for the SaaS that is going to be a sellable product on your own. So really happy to introduce you this series, which we are having this. Don't worry, let me show you uh, what is the demo and how it looks like and how we're going to work through with this one. So let me share the screen with you. And uh, by first look, look at this. The website is HTTPS. Yes, we, this is on our local host. Uh, we're going to work with the shaggy.mask-cell-loca.it. Again, these are random URLs, but they are on HTTPS. And these URL helps you to serve on the local host. Yes, the local builds are a little bit slower, and but they automatically get really fast in the production. But this is all what we are going to learn that how we can build that. And we're going to discuss the architecture of this very, very soon. But you can now go ahead and hit the sign in. Uh, you can go ahead and hit the sign up uh, wherever you want to go, wherever you want to work. Not only that, in our sign up, whenever the user enters the email and password, we are going to send an OTP to the uh, email of the user. And then we are going to just go ahead and uh, verify that user again. Again, we are not going to be writing that code. We are going to be relying on Clerk for that. And you're going to see how easy it is. Now, once a user logged in, we're going to learn that how we can restrict the user from consuming our resources. This is the 101 SaaS feature. You want to get your users in, you maybe want to try them product for X amount of duration or for X amount of quantity, but once that quantity is reached, you really want them that, hey, I don't want to have you further, either pay me or reach me out, and then we can allow you to have more of that product. Maybe that product is uh, AI generation of images, maybe uploading more videos, whatever that is. Uh, we just want to work on that SaaS level of application, multi-tenant system. That is our goal to achieve. Now here you can see, I cannot just go ahead and add another one. So if I go ahead and say test four, I just add this. This doesn't allow me to add more of it. Again, this is really slow because we are tunneling uh, that. So again, error, fail to do to do, because it says you have reached the maximum number of free to do's. But yes, there are ways that you can go ahead and hit that subscribe. You can hit that uh, behind the paywall system. And there is a lot that can be done onto this one. And you're going to see in the database as well that how it works right now, this user is false. Uh, and again, we'll see the whole user list, how that is being worked on. We have the whole to-do system as well. But again, this could be really complex system that can work with that. So we'll come back here and we'll see that. We can just go ahead and change the system, currently not subscribed. You can add a payment gateway here for the subscribe that, hey, pay now and only after that you can trigger this. Uh, so much more can be done onto this one. This, I agree, is painfully slow because it's tunneling, it's doing so much more. Now, once you hit that subscribe, I have just simulated that here. Uh, you're going to notice if I can refresh this, I have to refresh it from here. And all we got to do is we have just a flag which says true or false is subscribed. So it's a true now. And now I can go back and just keep on adding more of the stuff. That means I'm consuming more of the product. Maybe that's an AI based product. Maybe you're generating thumbnails or ideas for YouTube. You can sell anything, whatever you like. So this is a classic 101 SaaS template that we're going to build. And again, now we can just go ahead and say test four and we can add that. And of course, the regular old functionality of what can be done uh, with the complete, delete, you get, the, you get the idea. We have even pagination, all of that, so you can work with that. So we're going to work quite a lot in depth with that. Not only that, we are going to work with the SQL side of the thing. So we'll be having a Neon database as a serverless Postgres. It's a really interesting database to work on with, and they provide you a whole lot of things to work on with that. Our favorite SQL editor is all up here so that we can query our database, work with that. It's a fantastic one. I'm really enjoying working with this, and I can just yell about them for whole day. But again, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'll wait for that one. Again, we'll be using Clerk for uh, knowing about what can we do. And we are going to learn about the configurations, not only just the configurations, what more we can do, but most importantly, webhooks, how we can trigger those webhooks. How can we understand how to use webhooks, how to implement the webhooks in a professional environment? 
So again, coming back onto this, what we're going to learn. We're going to learn to build a SaaS software as a service uh, going through the event-driven architecture, which is the webhooks. Uh, the 101 of the event-driven architecture is webhook, but it is not limited to that. Once you understand the basics of it, you can implement in other places as well. We're also going to learn about decoupling of the authentication system. Clerk is one of such example where you can just leave the whole authentication system to them and from their system you can extract the required information like email or anything else that you are required or to work with that. So we're going to decouple that and we'll store things into our own databases like SQL but it could be MongoDB as well. Uh, but in this case uh, we'll be working with the SQL side of things which is Neon and Postgres and it's a really fun to work with that. There are so many ORMs available. We're going to talk about pros and cons of all these ORMs and how you can make even this service as a paid sellable product. SaaS starter template kit uh, sells anywhere between the range of $20 to $200. Depends on how much services you are giving them out of the box. Is authentication configured? Is a uh, database being configured? Uh, are the basic tables being already designed? Is the storage being covered? That's how all it works. It's a fantastic uh, whole series that we're going to work through. Uh, but again, this series requires a whole lot of support from your side. Uh, so please, uh, wherever you're watching this, please uh, tweet about this. Uh, and again, help me to reach out more if you're watching it. Uh, just comment down below that, hey, we're watching it, we're enjoying it. Uh, something would be really, really appreciable in this one. So from the next video, we're going to first uh, draw architecture of this, that how this application is going to work, how we design these applications and the whole flow of it. And once we are done with that, then we're going to fire up our Next.js application and we'll start writing the code. Let's catch up in the next video.